Thank you so much, Zoe and Ralph, for being with me here today. And I know we spoke in length about your projects, about the three massive projects that you have. Um, we are here today to go a little bit more in depth about those projects. I know it's under an NDA, so we're not going to say any names, <laughs> but the three big projects by RSP in terms of changing the hospitality design. I think the one that I find the most um, appealing one and interesting one is a completely holistic wellness resort. And I think it's reconnecting with yourself, with nature and the space within uh, this resort. So I'm very excited about this project. Um, the second one we are currently doing is a little bit more regimental. It's also about um, rejuvenation, mm -hmm. but it's a very organized program. Um, you check in for a week, you um, stay within the confines of the resort, you're not leaving. Um, it's of course very beautiful the design, so it doesn't feel like uh, you don't want to be there, but um, you kind of let the outside go, you uh, put a robe on and for the rest of the week you walk around in your robe and um, it's I think a very um, individual experience where the other one is it's also about group sessions, it's meeting other people and experience it together and then there, um, there's a lot of treatments, it's um, uh, there's a massive spa component to it, it's, it's really nice because the brief is very clear. They, 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 they have it in other parts of the world already. They know exactly what they want and it's, it's fun to work with them and to understand the nuances of what they are offering. Mm -hmm. Where the first one is, um, it's a brand new concept. It's something where we are developing with the operator and the client. We are, op we are, we are developing really the brief and we are kind of trying to understand where they want to go and we can bring in some ideas and um, it's, it's a lot of fun because it has a lot to do with nature. It's an isolated spot and um, I, I think it's one of these unique opportunities where you really can try to fit a building into the landscape. It's mm. not a green site, it's not just another project where you get a plot of land and you don't really care who is around you. Mm -hmm. it's, it's set in a scene and you're trying to make it as beautiful as possible with your surrounding and try to be as um, aware of where you are and you're trying to understand the spirit of the, the place and you're trying to be respectful to nature and you more or less insert it into the space instead of you know there's a blank side and you just put some building on it and then hopefully it's gonna work and look nice and so it's a it's a different approach and it doesn't come up along very often mm. so this is why I think it's a very unique one and I'm gonna hand over to Zoe because the third one is really her project and it's really beautiful oh, I was about to say the name <laughs> sorry <laughs> um, so the third project is more um, based more focused on fitness and wellness uh, and is looking at a 360 approach. So less uh, so much about being integrated into nature, but more focusing on fitness and wellness. Okay. It was really exciting because as Raf mentioned it, um, about one of our other projects, it was new for the operator. So we were very lucky to be able to work with them to develop this idea. Mm -hmm. um, and it was very interesting because we started down on the ground floor with a very high energy environment and we got to work with some great consultants to develop some unique and bespoke um, elements, so mm -hmm. fitness elements, so integrated lighting and um, fitness equipment to really get everyone engaged. Mm. Um, so that was really exciting. So not only did we get to do a beautiful design in the lobby, experimenting and learning with the consultants to create these new bespoke elements was really exciting. Um, and then we looked at, as you moved up the levels up to your guest room, you saw a shift in energy. Mm -hmm. So the ground floor is very energetic and um, very vibrant. And then as you go up, 
there's more the meditative areas, so there's the yoga and Pilates. And so slowly you're taking a deep breath and then <laughs> you get to your guest room, which is a place to restore and reconnect. But um, I guess what was really interesting about the guest rooms is again, we had the opportunity to develop some bespoke ideas where um, we introduced again, that 360 wellness idea into the guest room. So um, there was fitness equipment designed into the room. Um, and not only the equipment within the room, but offerings such as what goes in your fridge. It's not just a standard mini bar. Mm. It's all dedicated to wellness and healthy eating um, and looking at local produce. Um, so yeah, it was really exciting. So something that is said in this region, how do you want to make sure, because um, you did say that a lot of elements were designed, you know, bespoke design and things like that. One, who are the manufacturers or like suppliers you reach out to? How does that pro uh, process get started? I guess the consultants are already on board for the project. Also that, but I think for us, it was a unique opportunity to source ideas that are not necessarily in this part of the world because we realized there's no offering mm -hmm. that can help us designing this hotel. So we have to really go into uh, other areas, maybe even RSP realm in, in somewhere in Asia, you know, we, we, we hooked up with our other offices. So if they have any ideas, if they came across anything like this, we got, you know, our headquarters in Singapore, we got offices in China and there. there's a lot of interesting things coming out of there. But even they didn't really have anything which was this bespoke. And, and uh, so uh, a lot of it actually led us into North America where there's a big trend for fitness. They have a lot of ideas. And, and then we started to look, how can we adapt this? Maybe we can find suppliers here that are interesting in taking these things on board and maybe mm -hmm. changing a little bit their uh, range as well. And I think this will come. And but. It is. It wasn't easy to be honest because mm. the the regular stuff that we find here that uh, most of the suppliers have uh, on display or in their catalogs, it wasn't what the client was looking for, and uh, it was really something extremely new, completely never seen before, mm -hmm. and it's a great challenge. It's it's. Uh, um, made us really sweat for a little while because we didn't really know either what to do. But I think these are the, the, the challenges that make it a really fun project is giving us um, a brief and that wasn't really defined yet. And so we were working, as Zoe said, we're working hand in hand with the operator to define where they are trying to create the brand. We're trying to create the ID for it and the design for it. So there wasn't really a strong design brief. It was really what do you guys think about this? We have seen this. Do you think this would work? And you kind of collaborate more than it's not this typical client consultant relationship where, you know, yeah. here's the brief, give me a nice design in six weeks time. It was more like, let's start to work on this together. And I think this usually then becomes the most unique and special project. Definitely. And now that comes to the timeline. So are these projects under construction? Are they design done? What phase of uh, you know project timelines are they on? Yeah, they're in a, in, a, in different construction hasn't started yet, mm -hmm. so they're in different stages at the moment. One is quite advanced in terms of documentation. Uh, the other one is still in a very conceptual stage, and the third one is um, somewhere in between. I would say so. Mm -hmm. Hopefully. Uh, we would love to see construction start next year with the first one. Um, it's all about budget. Mm -hmm. And so we'll see when we're actually going to get the green button and the go ahead. <laughs> the full go ahead. Exactly. <laughs> um, so I'm going to circle back a little bit and ask you about, um, you did mention some of the projects were from scratch because the brand had done nothing of that sort before. But in one of the other projects, they did have certain other branches of similar concepts. So my question is in two folds. One, starting from scratch for a unique design, how difficult is it in terms of both Zoe, you did the interior design and Ralph, obviously the architecture side of things, but also templating. How do you make sure it stays within the brand, you know, theme, but also becomes unique in its own sense? So I'm going to start off with you, Zoe. <laughs> um, I think what's really interesting is um, one of these projects does have a global um, presence. So 
What was interesting is they very much want to have their own unique identity here in the UAE. So, and again, because a lot of these wellness hotels, they do really want to connect with nature. So a lot of it is actually inspired by the landscape mm -hmm. surrounding the space and creating those views connecting inside to outside. So a lot of the inspiration does actually come from the surroundings. Like for example, it might be the gardens outside that you see inflections of that in the textiles on the inside. Um, or like the stone that you see outside follows through to the floor. So it's very much unique to the landscape around. And then obviously bringing in those touches that make it unique to the operator. So if someone is familiar with that brand, they would probably pick up on those nuances or those um, little snippets that they would connect with the brand. Mm -hmm. But it definitely each has their own identity, which I think is really special. Okay, that's interesting. And what, what about like from an architectural perspective, how do you make sure that, you know, this is a standard project when it's a new concept, while with the other one, you're sort of making sure that it's still with, in line with the brand's concept? For me, every hotel is different. There is no, um, I don't think you can have a, a, a ready-made uh, model already somewhere in the drawer and you just pick it out and you say okay this is the floor plan we'll just stick a facade on it as, as Zoe said it has a lot of factors and for us it's really the surrounding it's the views it's it's nature it's of sustainability you know it like what is the best space where we can put it how can we optimize and of course we want to make sure that, that the client is happy in terms of his return on investment at the end of the day he's mm -hmm. paying a lot of money for this so he wants to make some money out of this it's not a charity case we understand that but uh, for us it's a it's a process that we go through and and we always say to each other we should be more clever we should be more efficient we should just take a, a blueprint out of the, the the drawer and just replicate it so we save time we make more money but it doesn't work like this for us because every project is unique every project has its own challenges and i think it's for us it's it's this fine line where the client he wants to be a little bit local but then he wants to be like a global thing and he wants to you know, everybody needs to like it and everybody wants to Instagram it. So how can we mix all of this together that it doesn't become just a theme product mm. and a fake product? It has to be real and it has to represent the brand, of course, but also what is inside. What are you actually offering? What do you stand for? A lot of these things come into consideration of how you design the, the, the building, the spaces. And it's for us, it's... Uh, that's the best challenge to have really because as I said you know even though maybe sites are similar you're on the beach or you're in the mountain or you are somewhere in the city surrounded by other buildings I think you still need to kind of respond to who is around what is around you and and I think this is what we are trying to do in every project and um, there is certain elements that the client wants to see and, and I think it's really that what people travel for. They want to go to a place and they want to understand where they are. Mm -hmm. it, it's not like just another hotel and another corridor and another all day dining. And, and then there is a pool and a gym and that's it. And then after two weeks, I fly home. I think travelers are very different these days. I think they, they really want to make the most out of the location that they go to and of the premises, I think. You know, I think also it depends on what age you are when you travel. When you're, when you're 18, you probably just use it to sleep and, and put it back and then you want to explore the city or, or the, wherever you are. But I think uh, when you're a little bit older, you actually want to enjoy the place that you're in. And I think this is what we're trying to do is, is this connection of your home away from home in a way you want to feel comfortable and you want to enjoy the space but at the same time you know you're in the in 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 a, in a setting where people serve you they cater to your needs and they make your stay comfortable and 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 i think this is what we're trying to do give everybody the best they can have for the time that they stay in this place definitely and i think um you rightly touched a point which is Instagram. I mean, fitness and wellness is sort of like the most Instagrammable things at this moment. And every design is like, okay, we need to make sure there's that one corner which is Instagrammable, you know, because we need to get those marketing in and so on and so forth. So with fitness and while designing a hospitality project that is centered around wellness and fitness, how do we, how do you navigate those conversations 
Absolutely. I think that's really, it's a really important thing that you've touched on because a lot of clients do want to, and we also want to ensure that there are those key Instagram moments because it's, everyone loves them. It's yeah. great for marketing and so on. But one thing that we really have to focus on and make sure we as designers it's not just about that one corner yeah. or that one moment. <laughs> we really do have to make sure that the whole area is designed holistically and thought about cohesively, not just that one corner. But yeah, that is something that everyone asks for and it's fun because it gives everyone an opportunity to come up with something really creative, um, do something different. Yeah. So it is great, but yeah, we have to make sure that everything else is equal is designed. It's, yeah. it's a really fine line because I was a couple of years ago, I was in a hotel and a uh, it was all about Instagram, basically. So there were like all these 10 spots in this resort. And, and then, of course, I arrived and everybody's taking pictures in these 10 spots. And, and then I realized um, that none of them will ever come again because they have done their 10 spots and the uh, product is not timeless. You know, once you have seen, and it's already, it's already passe, basically. Mm. You know, these are ideas that are in Instagrammable maybe for a few weeks or months and then it becomes kind of you've seen it done dusted you know and I think this is for me um, I still call it the Kodak moment by the way uh, <laughs> uh, that's a nice vintage touch there yes. I like Kodak moment and but I think it's for us it's it's really about a timelessness I think this makes a product amazing is because you want to go again to this place. And this is what I keep trying to tell our clients is that, yes, it's great to have your pop-up moment or something that you can do and it's a festivity or you celebrating something or it's Chinese, Chinese New Year or whatever it is, you know? Mm -hmm. But I think that it's, a, it's, a, it's an important element of it. But I think the important thing is that the rest of the your spaces are so nicely designed that people say, I really like this, I want to go back. Mm. Because that's what a successful hotel is about, not about some people coming screaming about the Instagram, the pink wall in California that is the most Instagrammable place in the world. And, and I think that this is something where uh, we have discussions like this. And so he's right, we, we make sure that there is some amazing things, but you know, very often the architecture, the ID speaks for itself. We don't need to have this I'm not in Instagram. Brad, pink swing or something. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, oh, swings. Oh my God. I've seen so many swings in designs. Don't get me wrong. I'll be there as well with a photo, like a camera in my hand. But it does get yeah. sort of repetitive sometimes. Exactly. And I think also as architects, architects, architects and designers, I think for us, we would rather someone want to capture a special moment of the interiors or the architecture rather yeah. than the swing, for example. Yeah. So I think we would, yeah, we would rather them take inspiration or that Instagram moment from an architectural piece rather than... Yeah, um, like, you know, you sit on a beautiful terrace and there's a sunset. I think this is much better than a swing. But <laughs> that's just... <laughs> Point for controversy. <laughs> we'll start that debate. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was something that you did mention is, of course, and we keep hearing this, nice design allows for great moments. Now I'm going to break it down a little bit and ask, what does a nice design encompass? And I think you both are the perfect people to ask this because we have the architectural perspective and we have the interior designer's perspective. So how can you make a nice design for hospitality when hospitality projects are basically 90% of the buy are UAE. So how do you make sure you account for nice design? <laughs> well, like you say, there are so many, so many opportunities here in Dubai. But I think what's so important is that each space has its own identity. Um, and where that brief comes from or um, the theme or um, the personality of that space, that we really try and do a lot of research and look into like the cultural background or come up with that beautiful conceptual story and really intertwine that into every detail of the interiors. And if it's an architectural and ID combined project, which we love doing, um, working together to create a seamless holistic story together. But definitely each space to have its own identity and just really working hard into looking into um, the culture and or whatever it is that is inspiring that whether it be 
Italian or something from Marcel Kemar or whatever it is. So every moment you see some of that story interwoven into the design. Okay, and what would be the purely I architect? think for me it's, um, it's the timelessness. I mm -hmm. think I have to repeat myself. And the other thing is, it depends on the, the type of hotel it is. If it's a business hotel, usually you stay one or two nights. If it's a resort, you stay maybe four or five nights. So uh, if I stay for five nights in the same hotel, I want to have the opportunity to explore and experience the space for five days. So not that I get bored after two days and then I go to the next hotel because I'm gonna check out their restaurant or I wanna check out what they have to offer. And I think this is for me always the most important element is because, you know, it's my client. They, they come to me to design this hotel and they want to make a lot of money out of this. So they want to capture when you go to this place that you stay there for five days and you spend all your money in this place. And I think this is for me the challenge is to create an opportunity to explore and experience things for many days. And not mm. only that you come in, you've seen everything and you're like, OK, that's it. And uh, I think that makes nice design. Was that the question? Yeah, nice definitely. design. Okay. <laughs> and and uh, I, you know, it's it's so subjective design and aesthetics. Everybody has their own feel to it and their own opinion and some like this and some like that. But I think that if you create something and that is not hitting the current buzz but something that is a bit overarching in design. I mm -hmm. think then you create the moment where people say this is a nice design. And as I said, for us, the biggest compliment is if we hear people, you know, we come again and again to the place. Mm -hmm.